Hello, Paul here from Trek It with Harry, as usual, flying the lens. And today we are beneath the majestic Hay Bluff, overlooking hay and other stuff. It's lovely, it's cold, it's a bit breezy. Uh, and we're here today to talk to you about these. Not these black diamond poles in particular, but trekking poles or walking poles generally. I'm sure, like me, when you're out and about, you've seen many, many more people using walking poles. When I started walking, when I was knee high to a grasshopper, nobody used walking poles. You had a good stout thumbstick. Uh, but nowadays, walking poles are a lot more popular. And I think people are starting to understand the benefits of using poles. And those benefits are only available to those who understand the technique and can master it. So this video is uh, aimed to help you do that. It's to help you understand the benefits of using poles. It's to help you understand the basic techniques that will help you get the most out of them. I often hear stories from customers in the shop and they go, oh, there's any walking, I keep tripping over them, they're getting away, they're, oh, they're, I'm not having those, they're a waste of time. And generally speaking, it's because people haven't taken the time or they just don't understand the basic techniques that make these such a worthwhile addition to your outdoor kit pool. So, without further ado, we shall move on and explain some of the multiple benefits that are available to you, my dear viewer, if you should choose to use some tracking poles. Benefit number one. I've just thought actually, Harry, if I start doing benefit number one, I'm gonna lose count. So let's just go benefits. Okay, says Harry. Stability and support. Obviously, having a pair of walking poles in your hands is like having an extra pair of feet. So if you're on une uneven ground, uh, you're going over rocky areas, you just generally uh, need that little bit of stability and support. Using a set of walking poles will give you some support and some extra stability uh, should you need it. Walking poles will reduce the stress through your body. Uh, if, if, uh, if I had a set of weighing scales here, which I'm really glad we haven't, Harry, because it's just post-Christmas and I'm a little portly. Uh, if I stood on the scales and I plopped the poles on the ground, just holding them, that would instantly reduce my body weight because the weight has been transferred through the poles. So, if you think about how many steps you take on an average walk, it could be 15, 20, 25, 30,000 steps. Each step you take by using poles will reduce the impact load through your feet, through your knees, through your hips, and into your back. And also, by using the poles in the correct technique, your posture will be improved. Your shoulders will be more relaxed, your chest will be open, you'll be more upright, therefore, there'll be less stress through the back, particularly when carrying heavier loads. So if you've got a big rucksack on, or even a little rucksack on, you generally tend to stoop a little bit just to, to get that weight balanced. But by using poles, it makes you stand more upright and you attain a better posture so there's less stress through your back and through your hips. So at the end of your walk, you just feel a little bit more refreshed and less achy and your feet are a little less sore and you're just not giving your body quite as much as a hammering had you would have done if you hadn't have been using some poles. The other benefit is traction and propulsion. Because you've got these extra two contact points on the ground, it's like having four wheel drive basically. So when you're powering along, you've got an extra point of contact with the ground and you can get some propulsion in that backwards, downwards motion. You must have seen uh, some Nordic walking or some cross country skiing. And that's basically where trekking poles have developed from. Uh, that basic technique of pushing down and backwards when you're walking gives you that propulsion. So if I was a, a cross country skier, I might be using this technique or I might be using this technique, but the poles are going in a downwards and backwards trajectory, providing much more propulsion. So again, you're easing your strain on your muscles, you're standing or you're walking with a much better posture, and you're just covering the ground much, much more efficiently. Okay, I hear you cry. That sounds fantastic, Paul. You've sold it to us. Walking poles are a must, but before you get started and rush out and get yourself a lovely pair of poles. It's really important to know how to fit them and how to use them. So the first thing to do is to make sure that you're using the pole at the right height. 
uh, poles are generally adjustable. Uh, they're either telescopic or they come apart into like uh, Z poles. Uh, but generally they're telescopic, they're either a twist grip or a lock grip or a flip grip like these. There are lots of different types, but the principle is the same. They're designed to adjust for height to suit the user. And your general rule of thumb for height is so that your elbow is at about 90 degrees and that's where the handle of the pole should be. It's a kind of a nice relaxed 90 degrees. So if I take this pole, I'm going to take this pole. Bottom section locks out. I'll leave the top section unlocked. Put it on the ground next to me. That's a little high. So I'll just slide that down to my arm. Is it a nice soft 90 degrees? Lock that in place. And that's it. That's the length of pole for me, which is about 128 centimeters long. It's because I'm tall. The other thing to think about is this. Now, I see an awful lot of people, and this is where I get my pole pedant hat on. I see an awful lot of people just popping their hand through there and then gripping tight onto the pole and just think the strap is there just to stop the pole getting lost should you drop it. I'm afraid that is an incorrect assumption. The strap is the integral link between your body and the pole, enabling you to adopt the correct technique. So your hand always goes up from the bottom through the loop and then the webbing sits between your thumb and forefinger creating a stable platform for your hand. You'll notice that the straps are twisted and that's because when you put your hand up through and rest like that the straps lie flat between your thumb and forefinger. And that allows you to have really nice, easy, loose contact with the pole, but uh, it becomes an integral part of the technique. Because what you don't want to be doing is gripping really, really tight. If we think back to how many steps we're taking the day, how many times that pole's going to be going backwards and forwards. If you're gripping too tight here, you're going to get some problems with your tendons, either tennis elbow or golfer's elbow, it's going to be painful. It's also very tiring. So by having the webbing and the strap over the back of your hand, it creates a stable platform that you can push down onto, like so, without having to grip tight. And it also allows the pole to swing freely should you wish to change your technique if you're going downhill or uphill. So it allows the pole to swing freely without losing contact and without losing that all-important propulsion. Okay, the basic technique for using walking poles is very, very similar to like I described earlier, that cross-country skiing technique. It's a, it's a downwards and backwards action. And the easiest way to learn how to do this is to start with the poles dangling by your side and just let them flop around, just ignore them. Start walking and then just start swinging your arms and the pole tips will make contact with the ground. And as they do, you can push down through the handle. If you're going well, and then all of a sudden you, your mind wanders and you, you can't remember which pole is going with which leg and it all gets a bit confusing simply stop let the poles dangle and start again what I would advise you do is find somewhere nice and level uh, you know like a playing field a football pitch is perfect where you can practice that technique just up and up and down till it becomes second nature and what you're looking to do is when your hand comes up it's in the same kind of position as you would be shaking hands with somebody how do you do so that's where your height of your hand wants to be. And your arm wants to be relatively straight. You know, a slight bend at the elbow is fine, but you don't want it all tucked in. You want your arm fairly straight, soft elbow. And then as you walk, the contact point of the pole wants to be between your feet. That's the contact point, and that will allow you to stride through and keep going. So as well as all those fabulous benefits to your health and your stability and your just general well-being and enjoyment of your outdoor walking and trekking, your walking poles can be used for many other applications. Like this, for instance. You can use your walking pole as a tripod. Harry has lent me his little um, handy bendy uh, camera mount thing so I can mount the camera on here, I can stabilise the shot and I get a picture of Harry. So, as well as those other health benefits that we talked about earlier, you can do something really relaxing with your poles 
and just use them to prop up your rucksack, give you a little backrest while you sit down and take in the view. Another great use for your walking poles, carry one of these simple little tarps with you. You can quickly and easily rig up an emergency shelter or even just do some super lightweight wild camping. Dead easy to do, you just need a tarp, a few guy lines and obviously your walking poles. So here's a really handy tip to use your walking pole. When you get back to your car after a walk or you've got some soggy kit or you get back to base camp, you can rig up a guy line to your tent or in this case to the car, use your walking pole as a post and hey presto, you've got a really handy little washing line. Another couple of handy uses for your poles which does involve swinging them around a little bit. Uh, you know what it's like sometimes when you're passing through remote farmhouses and they've got that uh, inevitable mangy farm dog that comes snapping at your heels. You can use this to fend them off. Get them back, Rover! Get back! You get the picture. Uh, also, uh, if you're going through kind of thick bracken, I mean the bracken's very low here at the moment, but if you were going through thick bracken, you could use this to brush it aside. If you're going through overhanging branches and things, you can move them to one side. It just gives you a little bit of extra reach and an extra tool just to fend off nasty dogs. Or swash aside nasty bracken. You get it? Okay, so that's our, I hope, useful video. Slightly irreverent, I do apologise. I got a bit silly, I'm a bit cold, but I do hope you found it useful to uh, understand the best way to use your walking poles and to get the best out of them. It really will enhance your enjoyment, your stability, your fitness, your well-being, everything. They just make being outdoors in the mountains easier and more comfortable. And you will ultimately benefit. You will be the best version of you. Mm. Yeah, so anyway, before I go off on some random trajectory, thanks very much for watching. It's been a pleasure to be out here with Harry filming today. Uh, if you've enjoyed the video, pop some comments or questions below. And please do subscribe and hit the little bell icon so you will be notified of any new releases and upcoming videos. So all that's left for me to do is to say toodaloo. Thanks for watching. See you again soon.